Okay, so today we're going to be learning about at-home fire safety. Every year there's about 353,100 homes that burn to the ground because of people not being precautionary about fire safety, which results in 2,620 deaths and $7.2 billion worth of property damage. And these statistics are why it is important to focus on fire safety. Um, today's lesson is going to be about how to prepare for a fire, how to survive a fire, and why that knowing this information is important. Um, so the first reason is preparation. I remember in elementary, they used to have people come in and talk to us about fire safety and like ways to prevent it. And we should talk to our family about it and just understanding how to deal with the fire as a whole. And the biggest part that I remember is them having us talk to our families about exit points and figuring out where we should go and just overall understanding our house and how to get out if that does ever occur. Um, but so here I have my house mapped. I have the doors as red and the windows as blue. So, and it made me realize that I didn't really know where a lot of my exit points were, which is kind of sad. <laughs> um, and another way to prepare for a fire is having like the right things that you need to have in case that does happen. So here I have a fire extinguisher. And so this, is okay. So most people don't have fire extinguishers in their houses, but they have them in like school buildings and like science classrooms, cause that's probably like the most dangerous place for a fire to happen. So to use one, first you break the zip tie and then that releases, like, gives you access to open out the plug type of thing. And then once you open that, you can push down on this. And, oh, yeah, and obviously make sure you have this out. And you can push down on this and then, you know, shoot the fire extinguisher stuff. And make sure when you are shooting it, you are aiming at, like, the base of the fire and not over top of it. Because if you're going over top of it, it's just not going to hit the fire right where you want it to. Um... Second, another thing that you should have in your house is fire extinguishers. I'm 90% sure you can't live in your house without a fire extinguisher. And you probably should have one just so you know that, like, if a fire is occurring and you'll be better prepared and you'll know what's going to happen if there is one and you'll just be further noticed. Um, and then also you need to figure out about the certain things that can cause a fire and, like, think about things that you're doing while they're happening, being like, oh, if I leave my straightener on, it won't cause a fire. Yes, it will cause a fire. I just never thought about that before. And you have to think about that on a regular basis in order to not have that problem. Another one is having a cord vent too tight, <laughs> which can cause no like air, like no room for the electricity to flow, which will just cause it to combust. And just thinking ahead is going to make it much easier to prepare for a fire. Um, the next topic is going to be surviving a fire. So this is another thing they kind of taught us about. It was just the main thing that I remember them saying was stop dropping and rolling. And I have a video of Travis. And Travis is going to show you how to stop, drop, and roll. Okay, so the people that are the people that are dealing with these fires don't understand the actual support of it. It's mo like mostly stop dropping and rolling is because if you are on fire, but if you think about it, stopping is going to like cause less air to go through the fire, which causes the fire to actually like be broader and wider and more crazy. And being on the ground is going to keep the smoke out of your face because the smoke's going to rise and you're not going to want to be you know, breathing that in because you won't be able to see. And rolling is like getting to your exit point, getting out as soon as you can. And those pre -dis like pre-disclosed exit points that you had thought about would be better for this so you know where you're going and the closest one. Um, and as soon as you are outside, make sure you do call the fire department as soon as possible because in case there are like any animals or other people left inside, that you just wouldn't be the one to put yourself in that foot and rather have professionals do it. So it, it's better. It's done better. Um, why is knowing fire safety important? Aside from the obvious, 
it's just basically like educating other people like especially like young people because they don't know what to do during a fire and they're going to be the ones that are most prone to getting hurt during one so if they're understanding what they're supposed to be doing then there's going to be less problems occurring and the obvious basically is just knowing how to be safe knowing how to understand what you're doing and just basically knowing what you're supposed to be how you're supposed to survive essentially um so and yeah and it'll also take that number of 353,100 and it'll dramatically decrease that so you won't have to, there'll be much less because if more people understand, more people will understand not to cause a fire. Um, so all in all, today we've learned about how to prepare for a fire, how to survive a fire, and why knowing this information is important. Thank you.